You've got to keep the white and the black separate. This is the story of an ordinary woman who was finally tired of giving in and being pushed around. This is the story of Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was born in Tuskegee, Alabama on February the 4th of 1913. Being a colored girl, she was aware of racial segregation from a very young age. Back then, colored people who would drink from the white people's water fountain would be arrested or even beaten. At one point in her life, Rosa's grandfather would have to stand outside their house with a shotgun while members of the Ku Klux Klan, otherwise known as the KKK, raided their streets. She attended a segregated school in which colored students had to walk from their house to school whereas the whites provided with buses as well as a new school building. She then attended an all-girls school in Montgomery but dropped out in the 11th grade to care for her sick grandmother back in Pine Level. Instead of returning to school, she moved back to Montgomery, finding a job as a seamstress in order to support her family. She married Raymond Parks in 1932 at the age of 19, who helped her get her high school diploma. Raymond Parks was a part of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also known as NAACP, and because of this, Rosa decided to be a part of the NAACP. Throughout 1957, Rosa showed Democratic leadership when she served as Secretary for President of the NAACP, E.D. Nixon, as well as a youth leader for the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP. Rosa was also part of other groups, such as the Montgomery Voters League. All of the organizations and groups she was a part of had the same goal of civil rights, or rights that go with a citizen. Rosa showed Democratic leadership in that she shared decision-making thoughts and abilities with members of the organization in order to achieve their one goal. But what was her legacy? Well, it all started December 1st of 1955 on a bus. After a long day at work, Rosa boarded the Cleveland Avenue bus home. All buses are to be segregated according to the Montgomery City Code. In this case, the way it was segregated was that the front part of the bus was permanently reserved for whites while the other was not reserved for anyone. Due to racial segregation, the way a colored person had to board the bus would be to enter the bus through the front door and pay their fee to the bus driver. They would then have to exit the bus, walk all the way around, entering through the back door, and finally taking a seat at their designated area. In Rosa's case, all of the seats for the whites were taken as well as the non-reserved ones. Rosa was sitting in the first row behind the 10 reserved seats for the white passengers along with three other colored white women. At around the third stop, the bus started filling with more and more passengers, which left one white man standing without a seat. Because of this, the bus driver instructed the color men and women in Rosa's row to get up and stand. Everyone obeyed, except Rosa. This left the driver, Joseph Blake, no other choice but to call the police. The policeman came on the bus, and one asked me if, uh, the driver had told me to stand, and I said yes. And he wanted to know why I didn't stand. I told him I didn't think I should have to stand up. And then I asked him why did they push us around. And he um, said, and I quote him, I don't know, but the law is the law, and you are under arrest. Rosa was taken to police headquarters and was bailed out later that night by Edie Nixon, charged with Chapter 6, Section 11 of the Montgomery City Bus Code which states, It shall be unlawful for any passenger to refuse or fail to take a seat among these assigned to the race to which he belongs at the request of any such employee in charge if there is such a seat vacant. The actions of Rosa Parks had a huge impact on President of the NAACP, E.D. Nixon, as well as Martin Luther King Jr., who had wanted to protest the bus laws for many years. For a number of years, the Negro passengers on the city bus lines of Montgomery have been humiliated, intimidated, and faced threats on this bus line. Just the other day, uh, one of the fine citizens of our community, Mrs. Rosa Parks, was arrested because she refused to give up her seat for a white passenger. Nixon then stayed up all night that night planning a bus boycott for the city of Montgomery. The announcements for the Montgomery bus boycott were made to the black neighborhoods on Sunday, December 4th of 1955. 35,000 handbills were distributed among the blacks as well as ads being posted in local newspapers. These ads and handbills instructed and encouraged the colored communities to walk, carpool, or take a cab to wherever they were going, anything they could do to avoid having to take the bus. 
They did this in order to have the law of segregated buses changed. On the morning of December 5th, a church rally was held at Mount Zion Church where a group of leaders from the colored community agreed that a longer boycott would be more effective. During this time, Martin Luther King Jr. was elected as spokesman for the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP. Many argue the whole incident on the bus was planned by the NAACP. The reason for this was because Rosa was well aware that in the last 12 months, three colored females were arrested for the same crime, but it didn't lead to anything significant. However, in an interview done in Williamsburg, Virginia on June 2nd of 1995, Rosa states that she was unaware of what would happen afterwards. But I did feel determined to take this as an opportunity to let it be known that I did not want to be treated in that manner and that we as people had endured it far too long. However, I did not have at the moment of my arrest any idea of how the people would react. The Montgomery bus boycott lasted for another 13 months due to the city not changing the law of segregated buses. Many white groups were not happy with this. The KKK in particular wanted everyone to know how they felt, and so they started attacking city buses, Baptist churches, and bombed the houses of Martin Luther King Jr. as well as E.D. Nixon. However, the black community were no longer intimidated by them, and as Martin Luther King Jr. later said, they seemed to have lost their spell. After these 13 months, the city still did not change the law, but instead enforced a new one in that boycotts were illegal. Because of this, a number of people were arrested, including Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., and E.D. Nixon. Although they were arrested, the Montgomery bus boycott triggered a chain reaction of other boycotts in cities throughout the South. The Montgomery bus boycott was an event that got every citizen in the nation's attention. It was such a huge success, lasting over a year, and was what helped launch the 10-year Civil Rights Act movement. And in 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act, which made segregation all across America illegal. Before the Civil Rights Act, colored people knew that they could never believe in the fact that they were equal. They knew the whites were always first priority to the community. Rosa Parks was actually not the first to have refused to give up her seat and not the first to have gotten arrested for it. But for some reason, her case touched more people than ever before. Years later, her lawyer, Fred Gray, explains the situation. What was more important than her case per se was the fact that between the time she was arrested on Thursday and the time of the trial on Monday, the black community had become so upset and disturbed over the bus situation and over Mrs. Pond's arrest. We had concluded that this simply was it, the straw that broke the camel's back. According to Martin Luther King Jr., it was because her character was impeccable and her dedication deep-rooted. A lot of people say that the reason why Rosa Parks did not want to give up her bus seat for the white man was because she was tired after a long day's work. However, the only tired she was, was tired of giving in. And neither was uh, my feet hurting, as many people have said. But I had made up my mind that I would not give in any longer to legally enforced racial segregation. Rosa Parks was a catalyst that made segregation illegal in the U.S. And the colored community now has followed her footsteps as they continue to stand up for themselves and not let them be pushed around. Take, for example, the recent shooting of Michael Brown by white police officer Darren Wilson. Following the shooting, the NAACP organized a week-long Journey for Justice march where more than 100 protesters marched 135 miles from Ferguson to Jefferson City. Or the I Can't Breathe movement after a colored Eric Garner was held in a chocolate death by a white police officer. I think also the success that followed what she did had others believing that they too needed to take the step to speak up against the things they think were wrong. Uh, and not to accept the way the society tried to define who they were and what they can do, what they cannot do, but to say that in fact I am a person, I have value, the way you're treating me is not correct, and we need to make changes. Rosa Parks today is known as a mother of the civil rights movement and has set an example for people, especially the black community all around the world. This is how we shoot back.